Hey friends, Eric Andres, your Guitar Sage here, and today we're gonna have so much fun because what we're doing today is bringing it all together. That's right. For those of you that have been joining us all this week, we've been learning how to phrase, learning how to improvise, learning how to solo, kinda. We're not quite there yet, but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it all together. So just as I was doing there, just as we were doing before, right, all this week, we are finding out what our tonal center is. We are determining what scale we might use over that. We're being very cognizant about our tonal center. And that allows us to create phrases. We did this with just playing a chord and then playing a phrase and a chord and a phrase. And then we also did this with call and response, which if you remember, is the way that we learn how to speak. And since we're phrasing, we're speaking with our guitar, we're saying things, we're emoting from what's in here, right? Since we're doing that, then what better way to do it the way that we learn to speak, okay? And this is the way the pros have done it since the beginning. And so this is why I'm passing this on to you, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring it all home today and we're going to create a solo. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna put several phrases together. So just like each one of these notes is a, uh, a word, if you will, these words put together make sentences as we've been doing all this week, we've been creating phrases or sentences. And if we put those sentences together, now we get a paragraph, right? And if we put paragraphs together, then we get pages and pages together, we get chapters and chapters together, we get books and books, we get uh, libraries, okay? So literally, if you just keep this ball rolling, and you just keep on thinking, okay, what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step, you can build your whatever, enterprise or song or album, solo, whatever it is, build the life you want, literally just by just thinking step by step. Can I just say, number one, first, thank you so much for all the kind donations already coming in. Uh, Don, thank you so much. Uh, or Dan uh, Stiverson, who's been donating a bunch lately. Thank you so much, Dan, so kind. Really, really appreciate this. And, and um, I got something to tell you guys here in just a moment after I just do these these super kind uh, donations coming in here. John Black, uh, thanks for doing this, Eric, and the team. It's been fun. It's been great fun jamming with you. Thank you so much, John. Um, let's see here. J, uh, G.R. Flyer, thank you for the donation, friend. And Junius, thank you so much for the donation. Thanks again for this week. I've learned more this week than ever. Ah, oh, I love that. I love to hear that. That makes me feel like I'm not crazy. Because I feel, I mean, everything that I teach you, everything that I say to you, at least in the moment that I say, to, say it to you, I mean it with the most sincerity. That's why I try to put myself in a good place because if I'm not in a good place and I'm negative or I say something flippant or something like that, that's not the best version of me. So if I can put myself in a good place, then I can promise you that I'm always being honest. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, that, that really means a lot to me, okay? Thank you. Albert saying your arms are getting bigger. You've been working out. I have been, Albert. I've been doing lots of yoga, lots of meditation and lots of yoga. Right now I'm doing about an hour to two hours every day of, of yoga and meditation. And then I'll typically work out some in the evening when my little guy is uh, asleep. I'll jump on the trampoline and I'll, uh, while I'm working out uh, with weights and stuff like that and, and all. So yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Joking. Uh, not really though. I, I'm, I like to look better, I like to feel better, and I feel like a bazillion dollars right now, especially since I've, I've been consistently meditating now. I'm, I'm just hitting whole new levels now. So do it, do it, do it. Follow my stuff on, on Instagram or uh, Twitter. I'm, I'm dropping links there to some great stuff, great meditations, uh, oh, amazing stuff. Lee, thanks so much for the donation, buddy. So appreciate it. Okay, and Friends, let's start off the show here uh, by saying welcome, and if you have not already, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have already, don't do it again, it'll go away, so just hit it one time. 
hit the um, share button and share this with a friend. Let's get some folks in here. Let's try to get a new number today. Could we get up to 800 today? Boy, that would be super cool. Let's shoot for uh, let's shoot for each hundred as it as it comes along. Right? We'll do the whole Jedi mind trick and all that bit. Um, so let's let's shoot for a big number today. I want you to think big numbers in your head and also share this out to the kids if you would. Okay? Because they need to get their minds off of the. The stuff going on right now. The stuff being said that's going on the whole nine yards right now. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Uh, so do that, please. And then also hit subscribe and the notification bell. Yeah? You know how to do this, okay? All right. So what I was doing there right in the beginning there was just a little bit of slow dancing in a burning room. <laughs> I do there. I just literally played a phrase, played a phrase, played a phrase, played a phrase, but then we're putting them together. You know, we're putting them together to make a whole sentence. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to work on it together. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the, the theory, but not really theory. It's more like, uh, not theory as in you're thinking it, like let's go to math town on the guitar. Not that. What I mean by, what, by, what I mean by theory is, um, kind of like how we're thinking behind the scenes about creating a solo, okay? That's what I'm talking about. So let's do that. We're going to use a little, uh, we're gonna use just a blues chord progression, which is what we did earlier, right? We used just, just a blues chord progression, or we could do, we could use this one. Um, say let's just do a straight up blues we've been working that all week i don't want to throw you for a loop here this is mm, although it sounds very sobering it still resolves in a major key so i don't want to really do that to you because we only did that a little bit this week i'd really rather keep it into more of a minor blues for you not minor blues but minor blues scale but we'll use a major chord progression we'll use the basic 12 bar blues chord progression okay so let's talk about this uh, we've talked about the 12 bar blues before, right? And they call it the 12 bar blues because, well, it's 12 bars of music. 12 measures of music, okay? In this case here, we're doing uh, A7, D7, A7, A7. Somehow Siri thinks I'm talking to her, but when I say the word Siri, she does nothing. Perfect, Siri. D7, D7, A7, A7, and then we have a turnaround. Hello. No, I'm not talking to you, Siri. This is what I'm saying. Even when I say your name, you don't speak up. But now you want to talk. And then we got our turnaround at the end here. E7, D7. Uh, uh, well, heck, is that even it? I've only, I've only played this 700 million times, so... Yes, it is. All right. Okay, so this is a 12-bar blues chord progression, okay? It go like this. Holy mackerel, Dobro Nut. Thank you so much. A $100 donation. Dear Lord in heaven above, thank you. Thank you so much. 80-year-old starting over after a 45-year break. I love this on so many levels. Member of UGS Pro, have enjoyed and learned a lot over the last few weeks. Thanks for everything. Dobro Nut, thank you so, so, so much. Number one, for the super kind donation. Number two, friends, how about that for inspiration? 80 years young, starting over after a 45-year break. 
Eight. Members of member of a U, of UGS Pro, beautiful, love that. Have enjoyed and learned a lot over the last few weeks. Thanks for everything. So, friends, there's just just no excuses. Look, Dobro Nut has all the energy of a 13 year old. Okay, just like boom, 45 year break. Yeah, it's time to get back going again. Let's do this. Love that attitude, and that is the attitude. It's all about the mind, man. It is all about the mind. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. That is lovely. Inspirational. I've said it before, right? There's a book out there that says, um, they overcame the beast with the, uh, what was it? The words of something, something, and the words of their testimony. Nonetheless, the beast, right? The negativity, the fear, the Fill in the blank. Whatever's not what you don't want in life, you can literally overcome that by inspirational bits like this, like Dobro Nut, like watching somebody like me if I'm inspirational to you, like watching Joe Dispenza or watching Tony Robbins or whatever. Friends, you got to get plugged into the right matrix. If you're getting lots of negativity, if you're in fear, if you're feeling this stuff, you're plugged into the wrong matrix. That's literally all it is. If this sounds crazy to you, it's because you literally are in the wrong matrix. You gotta get plugged into the right matrix. Hey buddy, how you doing? I know. You gotta get plugged in. This sort of thing, this is what I'm talking about, is that sort of positivity, okay? This stuff is infectious in a really, really good way. You wanna get infected with this, okay? And it literally is. This, this community that we have here inside of UGS, UGS uh, members, uh, it's just a positive, beautiful experience. Yes, Matrix with Greg Barden. I haven't watched that one yet, but that's next on my list. There's a whole other world out there, and if you're like, this idiot should really just shut up and play guitar, you're missing the best part of what I'm talking about here, okay? I'll show you how to play guitar all day long, but there's a whole other bit that you guys are missing. If, if, you, if this sounds crazy to you, just stick around, okay? GR, GR Flyer, thank you so much for another donation. Thanks for the week. A vet appreciates it. Man, and I appreciate you. You know, we appreciate our vets so much. It's the very least that we can do, so. Okay, let's take a look at here. This is the 12 bar blues, okay, in the key of A. 12 measures of music. We have A7, D7, right, and E7. These are major chords, and they have the flat seven interval with them, the flat seven interval, which makes them a dominant seventh chord, okay? That part doesn't matter so much, really, for what we're doing today, but just to know, just so you know, this is what we're doing. Now, here's the cool thing, is that we basically can, can create a phrase or a solo right here. What I mean by that is this. We could say this is, at the top here, phrase 1.0, and then this next phrase is 1.1, and then this is 2. So something like this. So this is 1.0, this is 1.1, and this is 2. Or we could call this A, A, B. That might be easier. Let's do that. A, A, B. But the reason that I did the... the um, I, think, I feel like the numbers here are just going to make, make you more confused. So let's do this. Let's just call this A, A, B. Like this. This is how I want your mind to think about when you're soloing. At least to start off. A, A, B. And I'll explain this in just a moment. Okay. And what that means is we're going to have a lick that plays over this section of music. Okay. We do not have to do it this way, by the way. I'm just literally showing you a great way to start thinking about soloing, at least in blues, but you can start doing this in other things too. It'll, it will gravitate, it'll pull with you. This is why I always love teaching blues. It's not that I love blues so much. I mean, I love blues, I love rock more, uh, but to me the blues really help you to understand phrasing because it's literally all about phrasing, okay? So literally in this, these four, chords over that time over those 16 beats one phrase is made doesn't matter what the phrase is could have been any of the hundreds of phrases that we played this week then this next line is basically the same exact phrase or the same phrase plus a little extra sauce in right we've talked about the extra sauce we've talked about that all week 
where you just add a little something extra to make it juicy, make it yummy, tasty, a little salt on it, you know? And finally, the B section is where we bring it home. It's basically answering the, the question or bringing it back home, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play just a, a real nice slow, well, am I going to do it slow? We'll see here. Um, try this. something like this. So think about this. This is one phrase. Okay, and then second phrase. Third phrase. Right? It's like a very uh, symmetrical little setup there, right? Can you hear that? Yeah, sure you can, right? Okay, well, then we have to think about this. Now, uh, like, like this. This is our phrase. Now, this doesn't have to be one big long phrase. This could be like two phrases in there, two phrases. But, you know, just like a sentence might have a comma in it, and then it will continue. That's almost how I want you to think. You could do one, one phrase, or you could do two phrases separated by like a comma. Okay, I'll, t I'll show you what I mean by that. It's more of like a thought that isn't quite completed yet. Which is like what a comma is, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing, and then we're gonna repeat it down here, and then we're gonna do something new here, so that it's like, yeah, there you go. How you like that? How you like them apples? That's what that line says. It's like, mmm, tasty apples. Yeah, try it with a little cinnamon. And then down here, you're like, how do you like them apples? Okay, that's the perfect, <laughs> that is the absolute perfect definition there. Beautiful, juicy gala apple right there. And then second line, you're like, yeah, but try it with some cinnamon. And then third line, you're like, how do you like them apples? That's the solo, okay? It's all about apples. So we might do something like this, okay? We might go... That's phrase one, second line. Okay. Get it? I'm gonna do that again, in case you missed it. I want you to count, remember we did three licks. One, two, three, basically. And then the, f the second one, the first lick, I played it. Second lick, I did it, but I changed it. You don't have to. You could just keep it the same. Here's apples. You like apples? You want more apples? How do you like them apples? You could do that. Or here's some apples. Here's some apples with cinnamon. How do you like them apples? Make sense? So watch. Here we go. Okay, does 
that, you got that feel for it? Let me know if that makes sense to you. If not, say no, and I'll explain it again. Or I'll try to be more verbose on it, or I'll try to be more detailed. Does that make sense to you what it is? I just want you to understand that the basic concept. Say yes if so. Say no. I have no idea what the flip you're talking about, you freaky deaky, you know? Cinnamon Girl. What? Cinnamon Girl was released today? It's not a coincidence. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yes, but I need to practice more. That's okay. Me too, John. I sure do. Okay. Juan doesn't get it. That's okay. Not really. Esther doesn't get it. That's okay. Okay. So we need to explain just a little bit more, okay? Let's, let's say this. Let's say if I go, okay, um... If I say to my to my little guy, if I say my my son, right? If I go, he's getting ready to stick his finger into a socket. Okay, I say, buddy, don't do that. And I'm running over to him, and I'm like, buddy, buddy, don't do that. And I get down on his level, and I say, you know what, buddy, we don't want to do that because if you stick your finger into that socket, you're gonna get shocked. Okay, so it's like. Three ideas that are similar. The first one is the main statement. Buddy, don't touch that. That's the main thing, right? But then it's like, buddy, don't touch that. God, you know, I start bringing it down or I, start, or I embellish what I said and then I explain it to him. That's another way of, of putting it where, where we're saying something. Obviously, we're not using words. We're using notes, but that's all we have, friends. So we got to make them speak somehow. And we're using phrases. And so instead of us, if I didn't do this in phrases, it might sound something like this, okay? That's nothing wrong with this. It's art. Nothing wrong with art. Uh, just, you may not like it as much. But I could go... Okay, right, I can do that. I kind of did a little bit of that, a little bit of, you know, bringing it back home and stuff. But bottom line, it wasn't very conversational. And in the beginning, now there's nothing wrong with this. If you watch Stevie Ray play, uh, who's to me one of the best blues players of all times, he just, so there were times when he, when he did that real uh, phrasing, basic phrasing type stuff, and there's other times where he just went off, and that's great. But I guess what I'm saying is more from more of like a teaching standpoint here, you want to really try to stick to these phrases because later on you can get out on a limb, but you can't get out on a limb till you know what you're doing, okay? People want to skip the basics. You can't do that. You don't get to do that. No one's ever gotten to do that. Uh, you ain't going to do it either. I know you're defiant and rebellious and that you got a lot of spirit in you, and I really appreciate that, but you don't go to 12th grade without going through the other grades. Does that make sense? You have to go through the parts. You can skip the grades, but you can't take the grades and skip the grades at the same time. You're either skipping them and you're missing stuff and now you're having a hard time in 12th grade or you're taking the classes, okay? Same thing with this stuff. This is why we're learning phrasing like this, okay? So we're gonna do one of these together, okay? Let's work on this. So um, let me come up with something nice and simple, okay? So, and, and so Esther and the folks that said no back there, um, you know, that's essentially what we're doing is we're saying one phrase over this time. We're saying the phrase again, maybe embellishing it if we want, you know, I'll show you, I'll show you the real simple way of not embellishing it. So, so A, A, so they would be the exact same licks and then the third lick would be different. Just like in poetry, Esther, right? Remember in poetry, you did A, A, B. So it'd be like hickory dickory dock. The mouse went up the clock. The cl clock struck nine. There's my poem, okay? <laughs> it doesn't really make sense as a poem. But lines one and two rhyme. Third line doesn't rhyme, okay? In this case here, it works really nice because we're bringing it back home, okay? And it'll make sense. But nonetheless, so let me, 
let me do something really, really simple, and I'm gonna do this strict A, A, B, okay? It's gonna be real simple, okay? Second line. So what I did there is I said the first line, I repeated the second line, and then I just created a, a new third line. Does that make sense? It's literally the most simple way to look at this. But what we're doing is we're adding a little hot sauce on it. Do you guys like hot sauce? I do. I, I, had, I had hot sauce this morning, almost every morning. So here you go. What we're going to do is we're going to do one that tastes real good, then we're going to do another that tastes real good, put a little hot sauce on it. And then three is dessert. Think about it that way, okay? Okay. Here we go. Let's let's come up with one and we will do this together, okay? example. together I'm not really sure how we can do this together why don't we why don't we do something where I where we write the solo and then you guys do it together okay Timothy is saying we're we're losing focus Timothy you you losing focus 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 brother I can't help you with that all right here we go let's do this I'm going to write a little solo here you guys are gonna do it and then maybe we'll do another one and this this will give you the idea of phrasing and doing the whole AAB cool cool here we go let's try um <laughs> Maybe I'll show you a new little trick at the same time. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. That's phrase one, and that's all we're going to do. Second phrase. You can be doing this already with me. Again, here we go. Right? It's real simple. I'm going to do it one more time, then we're going to do it together. Okay, here we go. 
we go. Here are the licks. You ready? Now this is in the key of A. We're in the second position. My fingers are only on strings one and two. Yeah, only on strings one and two, and only on frets eight, nine, ten. Really eight and ten, but there's one note that I hit on nine, okay? So here are, here they are, okay? See where I'm at? Tenth fret, here we're gonna go. So you're, bend, you're bending up a whole step. Rick, wow, thank you, buddy. Great two weeks of content, lots of light bulb moments. Beautiful, Rick, thank you, thank you, thank you, buddy. Boom, blessings to you, bud, so kind. Wow, very generous, thank you, thank you so much, Rick. Okay, so first note's a D, but we're bending up to an E. And then we're taking this flat third, okay? And we're bending it up a slight bit. I think somebody said something about a flat third. Yeah, I use flat thirds all the time. I blend that flat third. Oh yeah, I use the flat third all the time. That's it right there. But we're bending it. That's the flat third. But we're also bending it into the major third. So, and then we're, that's the one, that's the flat seven, that's the one. Okay, do that with me. You should be doing this with me because we're gonna do this together, okay? You should be not just looking at me. You got your guitar in hand, right? Yeah. Okay, the second line is the same. So let's do that together, right? So it's gonna go like this. Two, three, four. phrases. So let's review. It's what we do twice, okay? Then the third one around we go, okay, so bending up a whole step and I'm pulling off or pick it, whatever you want to do. Remember, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Just go for it, you know, go for it because that's going to get you your own voice anyhow, you know? So in this case here, now I'm hitting the ninth fret with my second finger. Resolving it. And then. Okay, so last time. I'm going to play it one more time, and then you guys are gonna play it, okay? Even if you mess up, it's okay. It's art. There's no right or wrong in art. It's subjective, that's the cool thing. There's literally no right or wrong answers in art, okay? Someone cannot like what you do, but guess what? Someone's always gonna not like what you do, so just get used to that. That ain't a big deal. Watch. You want to add some sauce, you could slide into that last note. Whoops, sorry, my bad. Here we go. I'm going to slide into this note now. A little um, sauce there. Here we go. One more time for you. Here we go. Second round. I'm gonna slide. Just for fun. Last, bring it at home. Now 
I want you guys to try it yourselves. Here we go. Ready? I'm serious. I'm not joking. I'm gonna run the. I'm gonna run the clip for you. Running the the loop for you, not for me. I'm drinking here. Day drinking. It's water. Here we go. One, two. You ready? Not yet. Okay. Get your drink. Now you ready? Okay. Here we go. One, two. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Second one coming around. Third one. Let's do it one more time in case you missed it. Repeat it. Slide it in the next last note. Bring it home. Good. Can you tell me what it was that was a common theme about all of those licks? There's probably several common themes, but tell me, what do you think was the common theme about all those all those licks. Paul, you right. Paul's right. Nice, where they started, yeah. I didn't even notice that, but yes, where they started. Yeah, where they ended. Good, where they ended, yep. They, they end on the A, there you go. That's what I was looking for, where it was resolved. Good, and ended, yep, ending on the tonal center. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, see, that's what I'm looking for. You guys are getting this, okay? Okay, to start with a 12th fret, high E, instead of bending, it sure is. There's nothing wrong with that. Ends on the same note. Pentatonic scale major, question mark. Don't know what that means. End on the one, yes, they're harder on the acoustic. Yep, they probably will be, A and A. Okay, good. All right, cool. This makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, now, let's do this. Um, want to do slow dancing give me a yes if you want to do slow dancing and we could we could dabble with that a little bit do you want to do slow dancing that one that I started off with that goes like this say yes if you do no if you don't so much for the kind donation, buddy. Woo, Rich. Thank you. Okay. So, let's analyze this. We got, how about this? How about this? You guys tell me what key we're in. We got it. We have a, a C sharp minor and an A and an E. We start on the C sharp minor and an A and an E. The root note is correct. <laughs> no 
one's got it yet. Oh, actually, sure, okay, sure. I'll go with E. E works, E major works, sure. Let's do that. Yep, you guys are correct, actually. Uh, I think it, it has, you know, it's funny because it starts on this, starts on this C sharp minor, and then it plays the A and the E. So the chord progression ends on that E, so it's like, it's funny because it's, it's definitely. playing this C sharp minor, we're playing an A and an E. Street Bright Gear, come on, you're so sweet. You do this all the time, donating. Thank you. Thank you for another great week, Eric and team. Your work has had such a positive impact. And I so appreciate the donation, but even more so than that, the super kind words that you're saying, because this is my prayer, folks. We're living in a little bit of a weird world right now, but it's not weird either. There are certain uh, minds, certain spirits, certain people that have uh, said that this is what we're doing, that this is the area that we're going into. We're, you know, if you believe in this, I do. I've believed it for a long time. I just didn't know how it would look, but into a new consciousness. And um, and to me, whether you believe that or not, is that's your world that you live in. That's what I, the world that I believe in is that we're moving into a new consciousness and it's going to be uh, we're, we're going to evolve as beings in our minds and in our spirits. We're going to be kinder. There's going to be abundance, et cetera, et cetera. So I truly believe that. If that's not your belief, that's okay. I hate that for you because then that's your world that you'll live in. But I truly know that this is where we're going. And all my gurus, everybody that I follow, all the positive people that I follow, they all say the same exact thing. All the negative people are sitting there in sadness and, and fear and everything else. So, um... You know, it's like I always say, if I want to be fit, I follow the fit guy. If I want to be a drug addict, I'll follow the drug addict. But I don't want to be a drug addict. So I'm going to follow the people who are positive. I'm going to follow the people who are kind. I'm going to follow the people that have fruit. I'm going to follow the beings and the sayings and the quotes and the books and the movies and the videos and the songs that have positivity, that have those vibrations, etc., etc. I'm sorry I'm going off here, but it's just the truism and I got to say it and your uh, message here made me say that. So my prayer has been in my meditations here is that I want to be a light. I want to be a light to you guys. I want to be a light to my beautiful little son. Um, I want to be a light to uh, the world. And so the way we can do that is to understand that it's literally up to us, that we have it within us. And not only is it our right to be happy and to guide the world, but it's our friggin' obligation. And I would put another cuss word there if I didn't think kids might be watching. But um, we, that's our jobs. And the world needs me and the world needs you, my friend, to be positive. So find it somehow. Find it, okay? You can, I have stuff. I drop hints. I, you know, as much as I can without offending people. I try to, to drop hints and stuff like that. Um, follow some of this stuff, follow these videos, or find out your own people who you can go to, but they gotta be lights, man. They gotta be lights in this world. I can guarantee, I can guarantee to you, you're not gonna find it on the news. You're not gonna find it on any major network. Turn that crap off, I say to myself. Not saying it to you, I'm saying it to me. It's off, I, had, I turned it off decades ago. Anyhow, okay, here we go, you ready? Sorry, I had to go, go off there. Oh no, thank you, high vibration, go on, indeed. Indeed, thank you so much, Ono. So appreciate it. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is it. You. So some people said that we were in the key of E, and one hundred percent, you are so right. Okay, it is in the key of E. E major. So when we say E, we mean E major. If we say F, we mean F major. If we say A minor, we mean A minor. So we have to say the word. A, we have to say the word minor if we're in minor, but when we say boom, key of E, 
It's not E major or E minor. Which one is it? When we say E, as a professional musician, it means E major. So you just assume that that's what it means, okay? If you're dealing with someone who doesn't know that yet, then you, you might have to ask them. But when we say that, we always mean major, okay? So yes, with the folks that said E, you are correct. It's in E major. Or it's relative minor key of, what is that? C sharp, okay? So, um, number one, Lee, thank you so much for the donation. Kelly, thank you. Uh, thanks for doing this. I've learned so much. Love this vibe. Yay. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So our chords are C sharp, A, and E. So that means that we could use C sharp pentatonic. Right? Or C sharp minor blues. Or E minor pentatonic. I'm sorry, E major pentatonic. Right? Or C major blues. Uh, e major blues. Okay, cool. All right, beautiful. Here we go. Rob Y, we share many same beliefs. I haven't been able to be on the last two weeks, but thank you. I am so grateful for you and your crew. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Rob, and, and you always come through. Thank you very, very much, and I am very appreciative to my crew, too. Jason, Emmy, Mike, always here for me. Thank you. And Julia, indeed. Thank you so much, Julia. Okay, so if we're going to play the C sharp and the A and the E, then we're probably going to be resolving those phrases to that E, okay? Now, here's an E right there. Here's an E. Here's an E. Third string, ninth fret. Third string, ninth fret. Third string, ninth fret. Dean, thank you for the donation, my friends. So kind. Okay, so let's just listen for a minute and notice that I'm probably going to end a lot of stuff on this. Maybe some stuff on this. Right? Maybe some stuff on... Um, let's see. Uh, maybe some stuff on that. Maybe some stuff on that. These are all E's, by the way. Sorry, uh... E, 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 E. Those are all the notes that I might resolve this on, okay? So here we go. So what I'm doing is, guys, I just know where that tonal center is, and I know my scales, and I think I've done it enough to where I, I know, oh, here comes the note I need to resolve on. I think that's the way that my own brain works, and it's, it's really uh, helped me to navigate in situations where I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. And then magically, the, the licks will start coming out. If you can resolve those notes in the right place, they automatically just start going. You go, whoa, hey, that was kind of cool. I like that. Uh, even if you get out on a limb sometimes, and you'll hear me do that, I'll get out on a limb, I'll, I'll goof a note, but there's no amazing guitar player, not that I'm saying I'm amazing, but I'm talking about the guys that I really uh, admire that come into my studio, uh, you know, Corey and RJ and, and, and all these guys. 
Uh, they will say it all the time, they hit wrong notes too. So it just happens. You just gotta get out there on a limb, okay? So maybe let's do this. Um, let, me, let me see if we can, how I can phrase this for you so we can, we can do the call and response here now, okay? did there we did like an a a we did an a a here but the second a i changed right i went um, uh, so what did i do i went uh, to do is I want you to, we're going to take turns here. I'm going to go. You on frets 9 and 11. Sorry, I'm new to the guitar. Uh, on frets 9 and 11 in the two middle strings here, um, that's the only thing you're going to need to play, okay? So this is going to be the phrase. You're going to on the third string here, you're gonna go. This is slow dancing in a, in a burning room, Les Paul. Okay, and then you're gonna go. Do that right now, okay? So we're gonna go. If it sounds good, boom. Don't worry about it. Don't have to do what I'm doing exactly, but don't freak out that you're not doing exactly what I'm doing, okay? Nancy, I appreciate you. That is so kind. Thank you, hon. So sweet. Okay, here we go again. You're gonna go. That's all you're gonna do, okay? You got it? Here we go. I'm gonna play mine first. You're gonna you're gonna reply to me, okay? So here we go. Here I go. Thank you so much, Adrian. Here we go. I mine was the comma. Ba, ba, bum, ba, da, da, ba, ba. We're not quite finished with the phrase. It's still out there. It's not resolved. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Right, it resolves. It has that that tension. I bring the tension. You bring the release. Okay. Okay. Now, now we're gonna switch it around. Okay. So now you're gonna play the first part, which is. you. It's a little bit easier to play. That's you, okay? Sliding up to the 13th fret. One more time for you. Okay, and that's you. And then I'm going to go... Ready? Here we go. Ah, sorry. You're playing it first. Here we go. Ready? One. You ready? Yeah? Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Bum, bum, bum.
right? Good, good. You getting it? Look, man, the only thing we did there is we didn't resolve it on the E, but we added a little bit of tension. But let's talk about that for a minute here. If you want a note to sound good and you want to be able to rest on that note, but it not be the period at the end of a sentence, but it to be more of a comma, then the note that I want you to play is a note that is going to be harmonic with the note that you would resolve on. Okay, let's, let's explain that. So when we have scales, when we're talking about scales or har harmony, um, you know, we have the one, the three, and the five, right? The triad of a scale. And when we put those things together, we get this type of sound. Let's do it like this. That's major. notes work well together and the way that we find that here's a little shortcut is is you you find the the note the scale note and you go up two scale steps from that note and that note will harmonize very nicely it has to be two scale steps not two frets not two whole steps it is two scale steps because it has to do with the scale not the not the you know the frets Make sense? Sometimes it might be a fret and a half, or you know, a one and a half steps. Sometimes it might be two steps, two whole steps, you know? So it has to be two scale steps. So for instance, ah, we got an aha moment there. I see, making the bank, oh, okay. Talk about something, Kate, different. Okay, so, um, so for instance, uh, so for instance, I did this chord here, right? That's E major. The first time, I'm playing the third of the chord. Here's E major chord. And a bum 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 bum. That's part of this. That's my E major chord, and I'm playing the third, okay? I'm playing the third as my first ending note. So it's kind of a comma. It's very resonant, it's very harmonic, consonant, however you want to say it. It sounds really nice over that chord, but it's not quite bringing it home to the tonic, okay? Him, thank you so much for the donation. Having a blast, feel like I'm making music. If it feels like you're making music, it's because you are. Uh, literally, this is why I tell you that you don't have to even have the faith in yourself to believe that you can be a musician, but you do have to do the work. Uh, I can have faith in you, just like faith healers or these people do things like that. The other person doesn't necessarily have to believe it. One of them has to. Has to be some sort of belief system going on. And uh, just like a placebo pill, same thing. Taking a placebo bill, pill, same thing. Um, him, you are making music. Now that you know that you can make music, and I'm speaking to everybody here, now that you know that you can make music, just embrace that. You are an artist. You can do this, and you can do it more as you apply yourself more. You can become better and better and better and better. There's no stopping you. There's no, it's not like a, there's a ceiling, by the way. Did you know that? So you can keep going with this stuff. So good, good, good. So there's my third. But if I wanted to bring it home, my E. E, big old E chord, and I'm bringing it back home, okay? So something you can do there is if you want that kind of comma sound, play a note that's harmonic. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Eric, all this math, like, are you thinking that when you're soloing? No, I'm not. I'm doing it as I'm soloing because it's become part of my subconscious. It's become part of my body. But consciously, I had to really think about this stuff super hard. So did Hendrix, so did Eddie Van Halen, so did Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Page. Everybody had to think about this or feel it or noodle with these licks enough to where they said, oh, hold on, that note sounds great. Ooh, that note, not so much. You take note of it and you have to do that a few hundred times for you to start going. Or sometimes you only have to do it once or twice, but you really have to take note and then 
get it to sink in. But usually you got to play it a few times and go, okay, hold on, that'll work. Then after some time, these get under your fingers enough to where it does become second nature to you. Just like if I said, go ride a bike right now, if you haven't ridden in 10 years, you can ride a bike just fine because it's so, it, so built into your system that you're not going to forget how to do it. Okay, similarly to playing guitar. Okay, so Chris, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, let's try another one. Ready? Let's go. Um, uh, uh, what key we in? Caesar, thank you so much for the donation. Thanks for the lessons. Helping demystify all this. Yeah, my problem is you are keeping me from working. Ah, that's all right. You're working. You're working. Working at music. So it's all right. Counts. Yeah. Um, so I'm going. I'm going. Now, I want to give you a little bonus here. Just now when I bent that note, listen. See how it's dying on me? Listen to it, Ben. You can hear it like vibrating a little bit. And then it goes away. Ah, this cruddy 1965 Strat. I'm going to throw it away. I'm joking. It needs to be set up, right? So you may run into this. Uh, right now, the climate is changing here. It is getting to be spring, summer, kind of summerish, the first summerish day here. So um, Greg Ellis, my guitar tech, I need to call him up and have him to the studio because all my guitars need to be uh, set up now because here we are getting into this new season. So I do this twice a year. I do it in the spring, I do it in the fall. And uh, he comes and checks out all my guitars. They don't need to be set up. They're not set up. Otherwise, he sets them up, changes the strings, what have you. So this neck right here needs to be set up because that note's going away. And you're going to hear me play it like that. That's okay. I'm going to get out of it if I can first, right? Ow. <laughs> first dibs. Okay. Um... Learn the lick. Just get it in your head right now. Hum it. Or sing it. Mm. Gary's saying you need to raise your strings. Possibly. It could be the strings that need to be raised. It could be the neck that needs to be arced. It could, I could have a fret that's out of place, many things. That's why a, a good guitar tech is gonna tell you what you need. That's why I always suggest going to a guitar tech and not doing it yourself. Because if you just raise the strings and that wasn't the issue, now you got higher action and not necessarily the correct thing to do. But Gary, it could be that. Indeed, you're on the right track for sure. Okay, so here's the lick. Are you ready? We're at the 12th position, 12 and 14, 12 and 14. This is on strings two and one. So we're gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna play. Um... Mm. 
and then you're gonna play. By the way, this is a hammer. And then you're gonna go. Okay. Again, I'm gonna play. That's me. Then you're gonna play. Cool. You ready? Here we go. Here we go. Oh, sorry. I played your part. Sorry. Good. folks out there who, I don't think there's probably anybody in here that's like this, but if there are those folks out there that are like, geez, come on, play a big solo, come on, go. Look, I'm teaching you, number one. Number two, um, you got to think in phrases, in, in small, simple phrases. I could sit down, I've been doing this for like 30 something years, and I can still sit down with a jam track like this and just play those riffs over and over and over again and really just try to get all, just squeeze every drop of juice out of that, that, that phrase right there. Because if you do that, man, I've heard great players, very uh, players that could outscale me and do all this stuff, but the way they play, I'm like, dear God, it is soulless. It is absolutely soulless. And I don't understand that part because I get the soul part. I may not be practicing eight hours a day anymore like I used to, uh, which gets you all those licks and stuff like that. But to play without that soul. So like for me, I'm a big like wear it out. Like let if it, especially if it feels good, if it feels good. Do these riffs over and over and over and over and over again until they just feel so good, you know, and do they sound good. Um, something else I was going to say about that. Now, you know, obviously we're taking just one riff here and we're, we're changing it a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about uh, the theory behind this and the theory about what it is that we're, that we're doing for both of the licks here, okay? So we're, you know, here is form one of the pentatonic, right? So we were going to form two, this form that I say that I love so much. I love this position. I, mean, I could just noodle on that all day. Pascal, thank you so much for the kind donation. Here's to the soul, keeping the lights on. Beautiful, thanks, friend. Okay, so, the first lick here, let's look at it. 
Or we did a... What did I do? I gotta remember. Okay, here you go. Similar to the lick that we just did before. I'm playing this. The chord comes in, and I'm playing. And there I am playing the fifth of the chord. Okay? So I'm playing a harmony of the chord. And then when I, when I come to the end here, I actually bring it back home to the E. Okay? Or you did when you played that riff. Yeah. Okay, so again, we can use that harmonic note or that harmony note as a comma, if you will, and use the tonic as the coming home bit. You can, you, you can interchange them too. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that when you don't land on the tonic, typically it's going to sound like you, you're going to say something else, right? So if it's at the very end of a movie or at the end of your comedy skit or the end of a song, if you do that, people are going to be like, they're going to be waiting for you to say something else. And if you don't, it's going to feel unresolved. It's going to feel weird. You're going to look weird. They're going to throw tomatoes. It's, you're going to be embarrassed, counseling and the whole rest. Don't do it, okay? So you want to, uh, you want to end on that tonic, at least for right now as you're getting used to things. Then later on, you can start experimenting with this. Obviously, Stevie Ray Vaughan and stuff like that, they're not like, oh, am I ending on the tonic? No, they're doing whatever the hell they want, but they're, they're so acclimated and used to the, acclimated, wrong word, they're so used to the actual notes and where they can end and where they can resolve. And even if, even if they hit a wrong note, which I've heard Stevie Ray Vaughan do, or what I think was a wrong note, because now that I listen back to it and I watch the videos and stuff, I'm like, well, is that a wrong note? So like, literally he recovers so great from a note that I'm pretty sure that he was hitting a wrong note, but that he resolved, re resolved it so seamlessly that he made me question what I was even hearing, okay? And you will get this as you play more and more, okay? So now, I did the first one. You did the second one. So now let's switch roles. You're gonna do the first one, I'm gonna resolve it. So your your lick is this. Okay. Okay, that's it. Steven's saying, if you're confident, who's going to doubt you? 100%, yeah. So your lick is? Okay, and then my lick is. So you're going to do the comma, I'm gonna be bringing it back home, okay? Here we go. You're gonna start it off, ready? Go ahead, get your water. Wow, serious light bulb, unless you land on the tonic, people are going to be waiting for you to say something else that, uh, that is awesome right there. Good, 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 mm-hmm. Put your ego in the back seat, Daryl. You got it, brother. If you, if you let ego get in the way of music, it's you're, it's only it's it's it is a ceiling. Ego is a ceiling. You will not get beyond your ego. And listen, what we mean by ego is when you think you've arrived, when you think you're such a badass at whatever it is that you do. That means you've arrived. You ain't gonna get any better from that. So just what Daryl said there. If you can. If you, if you can always have this mentality, spirituality of, I can always improve, I can always get better. The best, that's what they always say, by the way. It's the people that are compensating for lack that say, I've got it and my ego's gonna get in the way. You can see it, they put the ego out front. Um, but if you cannot do that and always be learning more, all the guys that I hang out with, they're always, I mean, they're amazing players. And, but they're always saying, man, they're always constantly doing new things. Always, 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 right? So good, good. All right, so here we go. 
That's you. That's me. Here we go. You're going to start this one off. You ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Ba -da -da -ba. Ba -da -da -ba -ba. Yep. Also, things that players will do as just little accents and stuff like that. You don't want to leave this stuff behind. I love that you're that you guys are focusing on this, you know, the, the main stuff, the main licks and what have you. Then we can always add some fun little things like just going like <clears throat> little bits like that add all the difference in the world. That's what I call the sauce. It literally, it's like someone brings you a piece of cake. It's got no, no uh, vegan cream cheese on the top or some vegan whipped cream, you know, because I'm plant-based. Uh, so it doesn't have that on the top and you're like, oh, cool, thank you, I love pumpkin pie. And you're like, yeah, but it'd be cool with the, with the cream, do you, do you have any whipped cream? You know, you don't want to look a gift course in the mouth, but it's about, all about the whipped cream on the top, right? So, so we got to bring this into our playing, right? So like, for instance, if I was doing like, um, sort of little like or or whatever it doesn't matter I was just practicing um, what was it Sultans of Swing right he goes uh, he kind of does this little things like that listen to what to what I'm gonna do here and listen and I'm gonna play it slowly but listen to the extra little notes that are thrown in there or little nuances that are thrown in there that really aren't licks. He's just kind of goofing off with the guitar, but it's done in timing, there's rhythm, there's sass, there's sauce thrown in there. So he goes. Oh, sorry. there or he goes um, um let's see he goes I mean what is that why did he do that he just went he does that a little bit so why didn't, why didn't you just go? That's not what he does. He goes. Doesn't that sound bad to the bone? I think it sounds amazing. So when you listen back to this stuff, whenever I'm, uh, you know, uh, transcribing a solo, 
I don't write them down, but I just go, oh, okay, what did I hear there? Oh, what did I hear there? What did I hear there? Oh. And I get every little bit that I possibly can because I just love the heck out of, of all those little nuances. Randy, thank you so much for the, for the donation, brother. So kind. So thank you for the great instruction. You are welcome and super kind, bud. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, let's see. <laughs> those strings. stuff sound juicy and yummy and cool so uh that stuff blows my mind uh just because it's like it's not so static and this is really the way i want you to think about it you know bob ross when he's painting right the happy mistakes things it's like learn the exact lick that you want but then after a while when you start getting free it's like dance it's like yes here are the dance moves right here are the dance moves, step here, step there. Yes, there's a definitive thing there to do, right? But then once you start grooving, you'll throw in these little micro steps. You might be swinging your arms more, swinging your hips more. There's a smile on your face now because now it went from in here to in here. And that is a big difference. And this is not a metaphor. I'm saying this is really what's happening. The information is literal. This is all science, by the way. For those scientists that aren't stuck in Newtonian science, but that understand that there's something called quantum physics that was discovered not too long ago, but it's absolutely blown the top off of science. And those diehard uh, Newtonian scientists who are stuck in the old ways still think that that's going to work and it just doesn't work anymore. And there's quantum physics um, that talks about possibilities and it talks about uh, how, you know, basically that there is this layer uh, from our analytical mind into our subconscious mind, and once we do something enough times, that which is in here comes down, right? As above, below. You've heard that expression. That can be many, many different things, but that's one of them, in my opinion. Uh, goes into the subconscious. Now it becomes part of you, and now you are just playing. When Stevie Ray Vaughan is playing, he's not like, oh, God, what's the chord change? Oh, I hope I get the chord change. We'll cue him. We'll cue, guys. Cue in. No, have you seen that guy when he's playing and he breaks a, so breaks a string in the middle of a solo? Guy doesn't flinch. Guy does not flinch. He keeps playing. He just lost a string. He busted his string. Right? And then he's playing. Looks back at his tech. His tech comes, runs out, puts another guitar on him. It's like nothing happened. And it becomes part of the show. What? Yeah. But that only happens through lots of practice, right? It won't happen from just doing it once or twice. That would be not cool right? Then we wouldn't have Stevie Ray Vaughan. Then all of y'all would be Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's only going to, it's only, it's number one, it's available to all of you. It's available to all of me. It's available to all of us, but uh, we have to, we have to apply ourselves. We have to walk up the mountain to get to it, you know, but I love it. It's the journey is amazing, you know. D Buster, how many infinities are there, right? It's like the would now be a good time, would now be, a, what was it, would now be a good time to start, what's the expression? Ah, forget it, but nonetheless. Okay, you get it. Um, yes, okay. Why does E start on both the 12th and 9th fret? So, um, there's an E here, and there's an E here, but there's not an E, but the 12th fret, there's one here and there's one here, but they're they're on different strings. They're not on the same string. Make sense? Okay. Good. Let's get into some questions. And if we want to do some more of this, then we will. But let me get to some questions here. 
Eric, thoughts on starting a solo on beat one versus waiting a little like and a two? Galaxy, totally great to do. It's, it's subjective, but at the same time, that's not the word I wanted. It is subjective. You can start whatever you want, but uh, contrast is the word that I was looking for. So if you start things oftentimes on the one, then yeah, start it on the and of two or start it on the and of four. Uh, just doing something different. But I don't even think about that stuff. Uh, the reason I would think about that, number one, is if I noticed, hey, dude, you start every single solo on one, you know? And if I said that, then I would be like, hmm, Ah, maybe I should change that up. I remember in 1990, I think it was 1990, 1991, I had written a bunch of songs. I was in a band called Me and Eric. We were writing some killer songs, uh, me and my buddy. And um, But what I noticed was every song had the same rhythm. And it was this. My strumming rhythm was the same way every single time. Does that make sense? So all, all of them were the same, so I, so I changed it up. Okay, Frank is saying, please, Lord, tell me. Tell me that was E major pentatonic, or I have to go do the 30 lessons over again. Brad, yes, it was E major pentatonic. Yes, it was. We were doing E major pentatonic. We were starting right here. Or C sharp minor pentatonic, indeed. Fare thee well. Fail, fail thee well. <laughs> I love that. Fail thee well. Yep, in, indeed. Okay, once you get into the solo, I start to recognize the box and then follow, and then start following the boxes from there. Is that bad? Authentically, MG, no, it's not bad, especially if what you're saying sounds good. But if you're like most people and you're playing the boxes and you're like, yeah, I'm playing the boxes, I can hear that I'm in the right key. So, yay, I have that going for me, but I'm still not saying what I want to say, right? You ever in a bit in a conversation and you're tr it won't come out what it is that you want to say? Uh, it's like that. If you're playing and, and you're like, yeah, but dear Lord, I want it to sound better than that, then that means you got to slow things down and you need to work on some phrases and you need to like take a little mental note here and go, now why... Would that sound good? Why would that work? You know, why would that? Let's see. Um, like if I said, um, so right in this solo, he goes. Right, that's an A chord. The lick that he plays over that is this. Let's analyze that. This right here. This is a what chord? What chord is that, my friends? Got my pinky right there. Looks an awful lot like a C formation, but look where that pinky is, that pinky is. For those folks in UGS who know this stuff, what is that? What chord is this that I'm playing? I'm playing an arpeggio. Thank you, Jared. Yes, it's an A. Thank you, George. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Galen. Yeah. So that's not a mystery that there's a chord being played. Thank you, Kevin. A major chord, and then he's playing. Now what? Now he does this. Then he, he does another arpeggio on the way down. An arpeggio, by the way, is a chord played note by note. So here's a chord. Here's an arpeggio. Right? So that's all he did. Now he plays this arpeggio. Does anybody want
want to take a stab at what chord he may be playing over the top of. Because that's an arpeggio right there. What is it? Rick, thank you so much for the donation, brother. Thank you, thank you. You got it, Jimmy. It's a D. It's a D minor, to be, to be specific. It's a D minor. Uh, Jay said an F, and um, the F would be the relative major of it, so you're not too far off of there, J uh, Jay. You're not too off of that, you know? There's an F, right? And you were kind of thinking that. So you're very, very close, okay? Lights are going on. You guys are getting this stuff. I'm so proud of you. This is awesome, right? Because I want you guys to have wings. I want you to fly and do your thing and rock. Uh, remember me when you're flying away. See? Hey, Daddy. Okay? So, here you go. Now we, there's our... Right? My knees hurt. F sharp is D minor. It's not. Uh, they're related, but they're one note a, a, away from each other. But you're on the right track, my knees, right? So... Uh, every related major and minor chord, they're not the same exact chord, but they share two notes. So if we were going to substitute, say in jazz, then boom, we would have that. The D minor seventh, yes, would, would have some, would have the same notes, yes. But in this case here, just the D minor. So we got. Okay, so something to think about is whatever chord's being played, you won't tip your hat to that lady, Right? Think about the chord as a lady, and think about uh, the old the old time with the cowboys, and they say, "How you doing, ma'am?" or whatever, like in the old Southern times. Thing, thank you, ma'am. That's what you want to do to the chord. Is you want to you want to acknowledge the chord. Hey, how you doing, chord? By playing a note or two from it, it will help to make everything sound like you know what you're talking about. Like two people talking, two people that are simpatico, right? They're talking, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, and this, that, and the other thing, and they're into each other and they're talking. You wanna do the same thing with these chords. So in this case here, we got arpeggios there. We're, we're dancing around that chord, we're painting notes around that chord. And this is where sometimes, look, when Mark Knopfler wrote this solo, he didn't just poop this solo out. As good as Mark Knopfler is, he didn't just go, all right, run the track. Here we go. And it's first take. That's not what happens. Rarely, rarely, rarely has that ever been done. And the stories that you hear where that's been done, let's say like Eddie Van Halen in the studio with Beat It, where he did it in the first take, he didn't write the solo in one take. He wrote the solo at home. He said, give me the chord progression and I'll play it. And he played the chord progression at home, did it. And then when the track ran, then he did it. Okay, just like if you see a video from me, of me playing something, that's not the first time I played it, right? That's like maybe the hundredth or thousandth time that I've played it. But you, the one that you see is the last one. So you're like, oh my God, you just played that. No, I didn't. I played it about a thousand times before that. So, um, so what I want, the reason I say that to you is I want you to not think that you have to be David Copperfield, which by the way is an illusionist. He also has his tricks that he's doing, right? So, uh, understand that the, all this stuff just comes from practice. So what people like me and other guitar players do is when, they ha when they're writing a solo, they will evaluate the chords and, okay, okay, at this point, I'm going to do this and such, and at this point, I'm going to do this and such. So for instance, um, um, like we d we've done it here with just single notes, but you saw the arpeggio with a... Right? chord and a, and a D minor chord and that's exactly what he played. He played exactly what the rhythm guitar player, who was him, played. Okay? Another case in point, we have Comfortably Numb, right? I'm going to get to some questions in just a minute. Okay, so it starts off a D. Right? What does Gilmore do? He goes, right? That lick right there. He's got that little triangle. Which looks a lot like a, a D chord. 
chord up an octave, he goes. But Gilmore does this. But he doesn't play it square like that, he goes. Or. Now look at there. major chord and it just so happens that he's playing them over an A major chord what not coincidence friends and it's not like it's not like he just probably played that by mistake he probably was thinking well there's an A chord I could do this little thing either way it doesn't matter how you get to it whether you're just doing it by ear you're doing it through theory the result is the same you get a really cool lick that tips a tap towards the chord okay make sense all right let me get into some questions here do you solo around the key of the last chord? If the last chord played was a C chord, would you play the notes in the C minor pentatonic? So Gene, you're either in a major key or in a minor key. Oh good, George, light bulb moment. Woo, love it. Okay, so you're either in a major key or in a minor key. So when we say the key of C, we mean C major, okay? If we meant C minor, we would say the word C minor. I'm just trying to make that clear so everybody, including you, know that, that if you say was, if the last chord was a C, well, you're saying C major is what you're saying by C. So we, de we definitely wouldn't be playing C minor over it. Does that make sense? Unless it was blues, and blues we can get away with that. But, you know, that's just that. What's up, little dude? You want to say hi? Come on over here and say hi. People want to say, want you to say hi. They, they miss you. Come on. And, and come say videos and videos and recycle. Okay. Well, come over here and say, and say hi to everybody. He's got his, little, got his little planet shirt on today. And he learned something new. So what, what was it about recycling? W would you tell people? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Nice. I love it. Thank you so much, buddy. You're my boy. Yeah? yeah, we're gonna go outside now. Okay, you go outside now. Bye. It's still, it's still sidewalk chalk. Go play some sidewalk chalk, dude. I love you. Have fun. Be careful out there. That's okay. little E. That's my boy. Yeah. See you, guy. <laughs> All right, little Peter Parker. That's right. Oh, uh, hey, everybody's saying hi to you, Eric. They're saying, hey, dude. Hey, boy. Hey, pal. Hey, Peter Parker. Hello, Captain. Captain America. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, um, so yes, when, when you know, if we're playing a C chord, Gene, then, or let's just say we're in the key of C, we mean C major, and so usually a C, some sort of C major scale would work over the top of that. C major pentatonic, C major, C major blues usually would work over the top of that. Blues is a different creature. I won't get into that right now, but suffice to say, if it's a 12-bar blues using major chords, we can also use the minor pentatonic over it. The minor scale won't sound good, but but the major the major pentatonic does because um, so many of the notes are the same. There's really um, I'm trying to figure this out for you. Uh, I won't, it'll take too long for me to figure it out, but suffice to say, the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, they have, they have uh, much in common. Um, in fact, they've, they've got a lot in common. That's why a lot of those notes will work, okay? So if it's a, if it's a C minor chord playing, Gene, or if, the, if it's in the key of C minor, then you would be playing C minor pentatonic. I know what you're saying is, you know, the la is it the last chord? It can be, but let me, I'll give you some examples. Kirk, thank you so much for the kind donation, my friend. Super kind. So notice that this, you know, this progression starts... <laughs> here it starts off very minor so I can do all those but then it resolves on the E which is not very common usually you would have some some other sort of chord progression that this is a very this is 
a un more unique chord progression, and so it, it wants to resolve on that E chord. So here's a, here's a safe way that you could think about this is, as I've been saying the whole time here, is when that chord comes around, give it the old, you know, the old head nod or the old tip of the hat. Um, just know what chord it is, and then if you're wondering why it is that the note that you're ending on doesn't sound so good, then analyze that chord and say, well, what note could I end on? You know, that's the way to do it because every chord progression is different, but usually the very, the, the starting chord is usually the one that you're going to resolve to usually. Okay. All right. How to find the pentatonic for any chord J super easy. Let, let's talk about it, and that's a, great, that's a great question. Whatever the name of the chord is, whatever the letter name and the flavor, major or minor, that's the pentatonic that you would use over it. So for instance, if it's an A major chord, you would use the A major pentatonic. If it's the C minor chord, you would use the C minor pentatonic. Super easy to do. Watch. If we have this, we got. C minor, C minor chord. So right there is our pentatonic right under there. Pick another one. We'll say just randomly here. I'll say uh, D sharp major. Let's do that. Okay. So we got. Um that are going to be sweeter in that scale than the notes that are in the major form of it because the chord is different, right? Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, great. That's a, a fantastic question. Sounds more country, indeed, because it's rarely... Uh, thank you so much, Michael. You rarely will find a country song in a minor key. They're almost always in a major key. So, yeah, indeed. Block baby, I'm glad someone still cares about the newbies. Indeed, indeed, I love I love newbies. I love to see the excitement, and I love to to get the messages from folks getting to those new places. Yeah, I love it. I love advanced players too. I'm all all that all all day long. I'm all about advanced players, intermediate players. I mean, the whole, the unstoppable guitar system has over a thousand lessons in it, right? Including 365. So like, it's got tons of advanced stuff in there too. But yes. Um, I love, I love my newbies for sure. My guru, I'm quitting my job, moving to Nashville, 
and live on your lawn in a tent. <laughs> Great wheat. Thanks, Sage and crew. Where are the kitties? The kitties are, are close. They're uh, actually, they're not in this room right now, but which is very strange because normally they are. So, holy mackerel, William Bridge. Wow, $135. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, William. Thanks for the past 45 days. Three bucks a day has been a steel deal. Learned lots. Hoping to learn more from you in the future. Buying myself UGS Pro for your birthday, for his birthday. Thanks again for all you do in the crew. Uh, have been doing here. Just need to practice, practice a lot. Beautiful. William, thank you so much for the kind sentiment. Uh, it's been my pleasure to be with you. And I have a surprise for you guys. Don't go anywhere because, in fact, I'll tell you in just one second here, I want to uh, I want to mention another donation here that we just got. So William, thank you so much for the kind donation. That is amazing. Whenever you see the reds come in, that means someone's donated like a hundred bucks or more. I think it is a hundred bucks or more. Maybe it's 50 bucks or more, but beautiful. Uh, and I'm like, whoa, uh, it really catches my eye here. So thank you so much, William. I'm so glad you're in UGS Pro. Friends, at least get into UGS Standard. That's the third link below this. A lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here, if it's going over your head, it's only because you haven't gone through that whole section there. It's super easy to go through and it absolutely will change the way that you think about guitar. And we, then we can talk shop, okay? Uh, catching up, thank you so much for the donation. So kind. Thanks for the wonderful week of learning and enlightenment. Progress made. Beautiful. Yay, yay, yay. That's what I love to hear. And every single time I hear that, that is rocket fuel. I take it straight into my heart and it makes me... Uh, makes me do more, it makes me want to do more. So literally every single time you guys do that, it is another uh, it is another hit of love where I can keep going and doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much. Uh, we're not going anywhere. I'm going to be with you for at least another 10 minutes. However, thank you so much, Mike, for putting that up there. Yes, uh, that Mike just put a link up there. If you have not gotten, gotten involved in UGS, uh, do so 100% free for UGS standard. Uh, if you want to get into pro, like I said, there's a ton of ton of folks that are in this broadcast that are in pro. They're learning tons about blues. We've got a blues mastery course. We've got a blues licks course. We've got slide blues, two courses in there from RJ Ronquillo, you know, basically how to play slide guitar and then slide licks. Um, we've got the blues primer. We've got call and response. We've got minimalistic blues. We've got the blues scales, the extended blues scales. We've got tons of blues stuff in there, okay? We've got over 600 jam tracks. I mean, dear Lord in heaven above, if you want blues or if you just want to learn, uh, you know, beginner to advanced, that is what UGS is all about. And we throw in 365 with that as well, by the way, 365 guitars. So if you want part of that, Mike just dropped that link in there for you. Um, I'll answer that question here just one second. Uh, Stephen. Now, a lot of folks are saying, um, they're saying, hey, I've really enjoyed this time, Eric. We don't want you to go. And I appreciate that because I love doing these with you too. And I don't want to go either. So we're going to continue this, continue this. And it seems like a lot of folks are still going to be at home. Now, we are going to go back into the studio. We've been given, uh, we've been given a the whatever authority of the word from from Nashville, which by the way, um, our the the uh, the mayor of Nashville just made an announcement because they said there was a big rise in Nashville of uh, of this you know thing, and uh, I won't even say the name, but nonetheless that there was a big rise, and it turns out that that was not true. Uh, turns out the media was was not consistent in what they said there. I know, crazy, right? Uh, they actually inflated the numbers, and it turns out that there was a prison in Nashville where there was a big outbreak of it, and that a bunch of prisoners got it. Makes kind of makes sense, right? Uh, so the a bunch of these prisoners got it, and they took all those numbers and they said, "No, those are Nashville numbers." And then, oh dear God, we're coming, we're all dying, and so they did that. And so, uh, but we've been fine here in Nashville, and they've opened things back up again. So all that to say, we are going to be back in the studio in Nashville, and we are going to continue this, this love. Let me mention a couple other donations that just came in. So sweet, so kind, and then I'm going to tell you what it is that we're going to do, okay? Because I'm not, I'm not leaving you, okay? Uh, this newbie is having a ball. PJ, sir, beautiful. This newbie is having a ball learning this stuff. I so appreciate you pushing to give it a try. Thanks, Eric and crew. Joined UGS Pro after 30 days, and it has been 
uh, and it has been a great follow on You're the Best. Thank you, PJ. So, so, so generous and so kind. Thank you. Beautiful. Kevin, thank you. Thanks for the lessons and the love. Both appreciated. You guys today, so, so very kind. Let me get to this. Uh, let me go back to this question here. I don't want to miss this one from Steven. And then there was another one that came in. I want to get to that too. So many things to do. Let me tell you about what we're doing next week. I'm going to be having a call with, uh, with the crew this afternoon. Um, and what we're going to be doing is next week, we're going live all next week. I need to be calling uh, Mike and Emmy and Jason. We're going to have a talk this afternoon, guys. You know this. Uh, all next week, we're going to go live, Monday through Friday, again, except now we're going to be at the studio. Cool. So all the nice equipment again. No dropping out, hopefully, with the, with the broadcast and everything. But you know what next week is? Crash Course in Music Theory. Ah, here you go. If you hate music theory, you definitely want to be here next week. Okay? You definitely want to be here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the mucky muck out. I'm going to take all the, the BS out that you don't need to know right now. I'm going to be using Pareto's rule, saying that if you know the right 20% of the stuff, you'll get 80% of the job done. Okay? We don't need to worry about the 80% of the stuff. It's only going to yield another 20% result. So would you rather do the 20% that's going to be that's going to be four times as powerful as what you're actually learning, or would you rather learn the 20% or the 80%? So four times the the work and one fifth of the value, right? Which one you want? So I think you know the answer to that one. You want the Pareto's Rule version, and that's what we're going to be doing next week. I'm literally going to be walking you through this. Uh, this is not set in stone, but it's gonna go something like this. Monday and Tuesday, I'm gonna be teaching you about the basics, like uh, notes on the fretboards. We're gonna talk about definitions, chords, scales, what all that means from a, like a real bass level so that you never forget it. We're gonna be talking about um, the major scale. This is all gonna be day one. Uh, finding, doing this all over the fretboard, uh, how that will transpose across all the notes, uh, across all the strings. Uh, we're gonna talk about the tonal center. We're gonna talk about intervals. That's what, that's on day one. Okay, day two, we're gonna talk about basic rhythm. We're gonna talk about chords, definitions, inversions, slash chords, that sort of thing. How to build chords. We're gonna talk about capos and how that capo is gonna absolutely get you to play all over the neck whenever you want in any key. Bingo, bango. And then, then, then it's heavy hitter time. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Number system, basic stuff. You're gonna learn the number system, okay? Like how to understand the scale steps and what that means in regards to the flavor of the chords and all the rest. Thursday, we're gonna talk about caged and bar chords. Now, some of, like I said, this is not set in stone. Not set in stone, but Somewhere along the lines here. And then Friday, I thought we would talk about scales some more. So you guys are gonna, are gonna absolutely understand all the stuff you need to know and not the stuff you don't need to know. Yes, two hours every day. So 10 hours, we're gonna go 10 hours next week. Okay, David, thank you so much for the donation. UGS Lifetime, uh, UGS Mug, UGS T-shirt, UGS Decal, enjoying the vibes from you all. Um, all I have done recently was with Stand By Me, Horse With No Name, Amazing Grace with Thanks To You. Yeah, love it. Victory there, man. Beautiful, beautiful. And friends, if you're in pro, go ahead and let folks know that you're in pro. If you're in 30, just write number, just write the, let, the, the number 30. If you're in pro, just say pro so folks know that both of these are super valuable and give it a thumbs up or a smiley face too if, if it's helping you, okay? For folks that aren't in it and would like to know, Okay. Um, okay. So let me grab this question here. Steven said, explain to, to these guys that the E flat major is the relative major of C minor, which is why you could solo in the same spot, just different uh, resolving notes. Yeah. We, we talk about that all the time. So, um, C flat or E flat is the same as C minor. Yes. What I mean by that is this. They share the same sets of notes. They share the same sets of chords. The only thing that difference differs is their tonal center. Oh, here I go. I'm going to get weird again, uh, relating life to other things. It's kind of like when you look at your buddy 
or your family member who has the complete political opposite view of you and you're like, they're a big moron. And they're looking at you and they're like, they're a big moron. And you guys are going back and forth. You guys are talking about the same exact thing. It literally is that it's just your your stance. Okay, now let's not, let's not go down the political. Please don't anybody post anything political. Bad, 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 bad. Don't do it. I'm just saying here that you can literally be on two, you can be talking about the same darn thing. Chances are you probably believe things closer than you think. It's just a matter of the, the words that are making one over here and one over here. That's how major and minor works. It's literally like two things happening at the same time, like two realities almost. Um, and one says it's this and the other one says it's this, okay? So yes, the same thing. Wow, Michael, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. So kind, $50, that is super, super generous. Beautiful. Love it, so kind. Okay, now I did see another one here. I wanted to get to it. Let me see, hopefully, hopefully I don't miss it. There. Dennis, thank you. Thanks a lot, lots and lots of light bulb moments this week. My playing has improved so much in a short time. Still so much to do. Yeah, love that, man. Flipping love it, flipping love it. Okay, yes. Okay, there was another question in here I just saw, and I want to make sure that I get to it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm putting Git Sage in my calendar. Again, right? This has been... Did we do two weeks before the 30 days or one week? I don't remember. Nonetheless, we've done seven weeks, and next week will be eight weeks, so it may be even nine weeks that we've done this. Pretty crazy. And during the 30, we did um, even the weekends, right? UGS course uh, references, please. Are you talking to me, or are you probably talking to everybody else? You want pro. I mean, pro is the way to go, for sure. Go pro. It's way more value than any of the others. Well, I mean, the 30 is pretty, there's a lot of value there too, especially for, for zero dollars. <laughs> okay, well, I was saying, what is U Udemy equivalent to? Those Udemy courses, even though they're, it's number one on Udemy, and we appreciate that, we've had a half a million people get into those courses, which is awesome, uh, but it does not compare to UGS Pro. It's, there's, we have way more videos in UGS Pro. We're constantly updating UGS Pro. You have to get more attention. You get live uh, video broadcasts just for UGS members. There's the jam tracks. There's the community. It's, it's just a whole nother level. It's just not the same thing. Um, okay. Yay, thank you, Esther. Eric makes it easy and infectious. Beautiful. All right. Friends, it's time to, to take that tassel and move it over to the other side. You guys, congratulations. You've graduated the, the, the week-long bit here of learning how to solo. Now, you know, if you've been with me for just one day here, Chances are you've got the tools that you need to to move forward now. So let me tell you what where it is that you could go now, okay? Going forward, uh, Charles, thank you so much for the donation. So kind. Last minute donation here. So kind. Thank you, buddy. Um, what I want you to do now is I want you to start working with jam tracks. If you are in, or loopers, if you are in the Unstoppable Guitar System, we have 600 plus jam tracks and we have plans on building more into there, okay? Very, very soon. Once the crew, once the whole crew gets back, once we get Josh back, we're gonna be building more into there. However, there's a plethora of jam tracks on YouTube as well. So just search jam tracks or just Google jam tracks. You're going to find that there are plenty of jam tracks out there. Find a key, find a, a, genre, a genre that you like. Use the pentatonic scale to start. Watch my pentatonic videos on YouTube if you need more. Search Your Guitar Stage Pentatonic, Your Guitar Stage Blues, 
and you will find all the stuff that you need. If you're not in UGS, of course I have whole courses on all that stuff and that you might find one video for on, on YouTube, okay? Go down the rabbit hole with this. The more that you do it, the better you're gonna become at this. It literally is just like whittling with wood. You hit the wrong note, you're like, I won't hit that again. Next time you hit the right note, you do this more and more and more, now you're speaking. Just like learning a new language, it's literally that easy, okay? Or that hard, however you look at things. Um, if you learned a new language today, you'd be learning it one word at a time, just like when you were a little baby, you learned it one word at a time, and look at you now, you know thousands and thousands of words, and you can do speeches and talk to people and improv words. We don't plan what we're gonna say every day, so same thing, but with guitar, okay? Friends, thank you so much. The donations today, unbelievable, so amazing. This is literally the, the, the day, um, our second biggest day for donations. So kind of you guys. Love you so much. Next week, okay? Be looking out for announcements from me. We're going to go live all next week doing, doing this um, music theory crash course, okay? Love you so much. Beautiful uh, questions today. And uh, be looking in the, in, the, in the bit here. Mike or Emmy might be throwing up some links of some recent videos and or the swag store or uh, other places that you could go to, uh, UGS Standard and all that good stuff. But the links for much of that stuff is below as well. Love you guys so much. I will see you on Monday, all right? Hit me up. Oh, also send me videos if you guys are doing this stuff. I will feature you on my Instagram. I'll feature you on Facebook, all those places. Send me some videos of you guys doing this stuff. I'm start, we're starting to get some in here and I would love to feature you guys. All right, later. Love you. I'm out of here. Stay up. Love.